this is Angeline with Cambridge Butterfly Conservatory for our weekly creature feature. Today I have another exciting first that's happened for us here at the conservatory to share with you. It's so exciting. Okay, so if you've been here before, you might have met our vinegaroons. This is Valerie, Valerie the vinegaroon. I know she looks a little intimidating, but that's one of the great things about these animals. They look ferocious, they look scary, but they're really, really gentle. So a vinegaroon is a type of arachnid, which means that it's closely related to spiders and scorpions. And actually, I like to think of vinegaroons as being a cross between a spider and a scorpion, although they don't have a true stinger like a scorpion. They don't have fangs like a spider, but they do have eight legs. They've got two body parts. They do have these really rather large mouth parts here, which again, look like they'd be really scary and like they could hurt me but she's not strong enough to pinch my skin. She just uses them to grab small insects like crickets or flies and eats them up. So I have here a few uh, rocks and logs. I just want to let her walk around so you can see how she moves. One of the things that make vinegaroons, also called a whip scorpion, is the long tail or flagellum they have at the end of their body and their two front legs. So those two things you see moving around very slowly like this are not antenna, but they're like antenna. They use them like insect antenna. So they're called antenniform legs, which is really cool. So you can see as she walks around here, she doesn't have very good eyesight. She has to use her front legs, her antenniform legs to feel and sense what's going on around here. So what's that exciting first that I was telling you about that's happened here at the conservatory? Well, Valerie the vinegaroon, as it turned out, is a mother. She laid an egg sac, which is really neat. They hold this egg sac underneath your abdomen for sometimes several months. First, she had to seal herself down in a burrow way down at the bottom of her terrarium. We had to leave her alone. She stops eating, uh, possibly even drinking for a couple months, and she cares for this egg sac. So we had to wait a little over a month until the eggs hatched. And then the baby vinegaroons, which are white, are very dependent on the mother. They will stay on her back, on her abdomen, for again, upwards of a couple months, perhaps. Then we had to wait for the babies to leave the mother vinegar room. And that, again, took over a month. Very long, we had to be very patient. Once the babies left her, they still didn't leave the burrow right away. They will stay down in the burrow with her for another four weeks. They change from white to dark. And they actually kind of just look like a mini Valerie, a mini vinegaroon for a while, except they have bright red mantles. After the baby vinegaroons left the mother, we had to carefully put the terrarium in a different kind of setup and wait for the babies to come out of the burrow. And that again took over a month, but just last week, the babies came out of the burrow. So now that we have the young vinegaroons, it'll be a while before we can put them on display and show them off to people because actually it takes them a really long time to grow and get as large as their mother here. Scientists believe that they can live as long as 10 or 12, even 14 years. So those young vinegaroons, every year they will molt, they'll shed their exoskeleton, get a little bit larger, and it'll be a long while before they're nice and big. But that was a first for us here at the conservatory. We've never had a female lay eggs that successfully hatched and have the babies emerge from the burrow. It's very, very exciting for us. Well, now you can say you met a vinegaroon and you know what a vinegaroon is. So thanks for joining me today. Tune in next week for another Creature Feature with Cambridge Butterfly Conservatory.